Okay, so we've looked at the uh, the ships themselves and we've uh, taken them out of the the bags and now I'm going to start the painting process. So it's, um, this bottle here is, always write the names on the bottom in case I forget, this will be Mecklenburg which is which is a Whittlesback uh, class uh, breed red knot and um, glued the mass on, glued it onto a piece of MDF um, the size is, um, in this particular case, um, prescribed by the rules that we use, that I wrote, so um, it's right. Um, so, uh, I wrote them myself, but I can't remember the size of the base, so there we go. Let's get the old ruler out, and uh, this is before we left Europe, so it's in uh, in French measurements, which is uh, 9 centimetres. Um, length and 35 mil uh, wide which is our standard base for armoured cruisers and pre-dreadnoughts so you can see there plenty of room on the base so what i'm going to do uh, next is i'm going to uh, sculpt the sea and um, to do that i'm going to need a piece of equipment and that's here that is just a simple um, craft blade um, you can normally buy these in packs of five for a pound down down the local market, or you could go eat posh and, and get some from B and Q. Um, they're a bit more expensive and are exactly the same. Um, you're not looking for quality with this um, piece of kit because you're not going to cut anything with it. It's just a, a tool for spreading the um, the filler. So um, the that's the equipment that you need. Not a lot, really, is it? And uh, the um, medium that we're going to use is this um, multi-purpose filler. Um, you can use any um, of the ones available in your um, DIY store, local DIY store. Um, oddly, I would recommend that you go for a cheaper brand because what you're actually looking for here um, is um, coarseness. Um, that will adhere to the paint and make dry brushing easier. When you're doing your bathroom, um, you want things to be flat, but when you're doing ships, you want them to be rough. So um, I'm just going to go through um, putting the C on, on this particular ship and uh, just to show you how I do it. So here we go. Um, as you can see, it's well used. So what I'm trying to do with this is is just create an effect on the base that uh, makes it looks like the real C if you like so I always start in one corner and just put a blob down and start to not flatten it out but start to move it around the base and whilst keeping it uneven so if we just focus on that you can see there I'm at a I'm happy with how that looks. I'm not trying to get it flat because unless you live in the Mediterranean in July, the sea isn't flat. And if you're from Yorkshire and you look out of the sea at Scarborough or Whitby, um, any day of the year, it's going to be choppy. So that's the... We're, we're looking for sort of a mid effect. We're not trying to get Gale Force 10. Um, we're just trying to get a reasonably choppy sea bit of wind break off the top of the the waves uh, I tend to put this on in relatively small uh, clumps I know you just put a massive big one on and at this stage I'm not thinking too much about the uh, bow weight um, or the propeller wake at the bottom. What I'm trying to do is get, and you see, I'm just going back over areas there just to roughen it up, if you like, to get that C look. Um, it doesn't always go in the same direction, it doesn't always have the same magnitude of height of waves. So there you go, um, I'll pause the video and I'll come back when I've got the base done. 
So there we go, we're back. Um, didn't take much longer, probably uh, about five or six minutes to do the whole ship. Um, with me not talking to you. And all I've done is um, just filled in exactly as I was doing before. And we'll have a bit of a close look there. You can see there's no real, um, at the moment, there's no real direction. Everything um, is a little bit random, um, just as anything in nature would be. Um, and the, the important things at this point to kind of mention or is to that join here the join between the ship and the sea is where you need to be a little bit careful um you'd obviously get bits of um i'm just covering some bits i've noticed i've missed there um you, you get waves going up the side of the ship but you don't want it to start coming up onto the uh these lower deck guns here uh secondary weapons um and covering the, the model so what we're going to do now is we're just going to finish this off and um, put some uh, bow waves on and put a little bit of a propeller wake at the rear um, have a look at some pictures of real ships um, making the way through the water and decide how you want to portray your ships um, you'll be pretty amazed at how much water is displaced by a, a decent sized ship going flat out um, and as war gamers of course we all look at the time when the ship was being tested and it had no weapons on board and it did 35 knots on a flat sea with no wind and we consider that the ship will do that speed all to, all day every day during a war game um and we all fall for it um we all like that little bit of extra speed but if you most ships wouldn't go around at, in fact all ships wouldn't go around at that pace for any particular length of time so i like to try and get my ships just with a little bit of a sense of movement maybe they're doing i don't know 10 15 knots tops <laughs> which for this uh, particular pre-dreadnought is is not that far off its top speed to be honest um so I'm not going to add anything extra, but just at the back, with the flat edge of the knife going from the centre of the ship, I'm just going to make some small indentations in the rear, just to give it a little bit of a triangular ruffled area at the back um, to represent a uh, propeller wake, which is, we're going to cover that um when we come to the painting and then I'm going to take a tiny tiny little bit of um, more filler and just put that in at the front of the ship and then I'm going to dig into the existing plaster that we've already done and just make a small bow wave um, just naturally from what I've done before we're not far off one on this side anyway and there's a bit of a build up of plaster there so I don't necessarily need to put any fresh in and you're kind of going out out and back as the forward momentum of the of the water would um, get slower as it's pushed further away from the ship um, it produces this lovely wave effect so again i'm not trying to get this this speed looking this boat looking like it's going at speed i've just put a little bit of a bow wave in either side that we're going to use um that as uh, that's going to assist our painting when we come to uh, paint the sea so there we go there's a the finished model um the tab at the back i'm going to use that um, to put the name of the ship on um, something that we've always done um, and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea but I like it um, when you are gaming with somebody who doesn't necessarily know every single type and class of um, German pre-dreadnought um, it's, it's useful for people to um, have a name on the back of the ship to recognise the uh, the ship that it's absolutely represented, especially when you've got three or four ships of the same class on the table, um, that even I couldn't tell the difference between them. Um, we also use um, this point here, the um, 
intersection between the name and the sea area um, as a marker for turning um, with our rules so it does have duplicate uses so if you're not into uh, tabs with the names on that's fine no worries at all then I would just carry on and put the sea base at the rear um, so this um, household filler um, it, it probably dry to the touch and in an hour or so um, but I always leave stuff overnight before I do anything else with it so we'll come back uh, in due course and uh, get some paint on welcome back everyone to the third um, video in this series in relation to one to 400 scale World War One ships and uh, my tutorial on painting them previous video we had a look at um, getting the model on the base and uh, sculpting the sea around it and this is the model that we were looking at earlier on uh, you can see that uh, all I've done with it since the last video is I have um, sprayed it with a matte black spray uh, the spray I use is uh, from Holford's, which is an auto manufacturer, uh, sort of auto car part uh, shop um, in the UK. Um, you'll have similar places uh, wherever you are throughout the world. Um, any black spray paint will do. You want matte, uh, if at all possible, uh, or you can do it by hand or um, with a uh, airbrush. You just want to make sure that you've got a clean. Um, coverage and um, we're ready to go so first thing I'm going to do and uh, I'm going to do in uh, this video is I'm going to paint the sea and uh, do everything else on the model so it's ready for the table apart from the ship itself and then we'll do a separate video on that at, uh, at the uh, after this one so first thing we're going to do in our quest to paint the sea is um, put a um, dark colour on and the colour I'm going to use for this is um, not one of my usual Vallejo paints um, this is miniature paint and uh, their paint number 24 navy blue um, this is um, a method that I've used for a very very long time the colours have stayed the same uh, which is probably why I'm still on a um, Vallejo, uh, sorry, a um, miniature paints rather than um, Vallejo, um, which I've gone on to for virtually everything else. Um, so uh, brush-wise, um, we're not using anything fancy. This is just an old nylon brush that I've got that um, you can probably tell from the orangey yellow on there that I use a lot for uh, basing. And I use this to apply uh, the first um, darkest colour of the base so um no salt tea with this um and uh, just going to get a big dollop of blue paint on our brush and literally slap it all over to make sure that we get a good full coverage uh, so we've got no black left um, on the ship uh, no need to be fancy down about this no need to take ages over it and um, don't matter if you get some on the ship you're going to paint the ship later on um, it also um, helps if you have got a little bit on the bottom of the ship um, when it comes to painting the the interface between the the ship and um, the sea itself so there we go that's um, that's the first stage and uh, as with previous videos um, the light and the camera do make this look um, a lighter blue than it actually is um, I'm going to put this side one side to dry and I'm going to come back and uh, paint the rest of it and um, we'll see how we get on from there so that's the navy blue done on our, our ship and uh, we're going to move on now um, having waited for this to completely dry 
Uh, and as you can see, it's a very, very dark blue. It's kind of a bluey black almost. And um, although it doesn't show up particularly well on this camera, um, it does tend to have um, a sort of dry with different shades across uh, the sea, which is obviously what we're kind of looking for because we're not looking for a uniform um, effect on the sea. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is um, add some dry brush highlights to the sea um, just to uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic. And the first colour that we're going to use is this one, uh, 70930 Dark Blue. Now this, um, when you see the, uh, when you see it go on, in fact you can see some on the um, wood there, it's very um, bright, uh, considerably brighter than you would probably think um, would work, but um, this uh, combination of colours is something that I've been using for uh, an extremely long time. So brush wise, um, I've started already, do apologise, brush wise, old battered uh, dry brushing brush. Um, that won't come into focus. There we go. Um, and do the typical dry brush thing, getting um, loads of um, paint off before I start applying it to the base. I'm not trying to um, do a light dry brush this is what I would describe as a, a heavy dry brush or if you've seen uh, one of my other painting tutorials I like to call it a drag because um, you're not taking massive amounts of paint off the brush you are um, keeping quite a bit on you're not painting but you're not dry brush dry brushing um, you're trying to get a reasonable coverage so if we look so apologies there's bit, there'll be a bit of a jump there in the video because i've just been talking to myself for the last five minutes uh finishing the ship off um so um we've we, we were on to um the dark blue and uh, the next color that we're going to use is this dark blue gray uh, 70904 uh, quite a common color that i use um i've used it on my uh, Kingdom of Jerusalem Knights and also on uh, my World War II uh, counter scheme. So um, another dry brush on here with this colour and um, this is um, quite a considerable difference between the one that we've just put on and we're aiming for slightly less paint going on this time obviously we just don't we don't want to go over exactly everything that we've just done um, and what we're trying to do here is um, pick out the highlights of the waves um, brush moving in all different directions we're not trying to um, get a directional effect on that we're just trying to um, and as you can see, there's the there's the effect that we're looking for. Um, that first colour, the dark blue, is quite um, bright. But once we've got this lighter dark grey blue, sorry, like dark blue grey over the top, it dampens it down and it gives what I think is a really nice effect. Um, so final colour that we're going to use on here is off white. And um, this is the first time that we're probably actually dry brushing. Um, I'm just going to go in one direction with this, uh, not like the band. Um, I am just trying to pick out the tops of the waves, the top of the detail on the sea that we've made. Um, just to, and as you can see, it really does. Um, bring it to life. I'm not using that straight out of the uh, pot. I am 
wiping it off the brush on top of the previous colour I've used just so I get a little bit of mixing just to take the edge off um, and you'll notice that I'm using off-white as well rather than pure white um, I do find that pure white can be um, very difficult um, to work with and, and just looks false if you like so it's just a tone under the pure white uh, but it does make a big difference as far as I can see um, and then just with that colour in its pure form having finished the dry brushing um, so bring that up there and that's the that's the effect that I uh, I'm really there we go that's the effect that we're looking for finished C and we're just going to put some uh, detail on that now so I'll get rid of uh, that brush and then get a bit of a posh brush in and just put a little bit of a propeller wake in uh, if you remember when we were making the base for that we uh, we roughed up the back of that base specifically for that uh, wake and then at the front we've already sculpted in a bow wave so I am merely using that to put white um, where the bow wave is. Um, more prominent obviously at the front and then getting less prominent little spurs coming off from the ship as it uh, as it's breached each wave um, and then the white carries on down the side of the ship and again the best way to reference that is just to have a look online on Google or wherever and a couple of pictures of ships making their way through the um, through the sea um, and uh, give you a very very good idea of what they look like and something to base um, your ideas of what the um, ship should look like so just before we finish this uh, little mini video uh, part two I'm just going to because as you can see doesn't matter how clever you are you're going to get some uh, bleed of paint onto the tab at the back um, and just going to cover that with black paint just so that we've got a fresh base on which to put our name later on so there we go that's the um, that's my version of C finished and um, if you look at the various collections of ships on Yorkshire Gamer, uh, they've all been done this way. And uh, many years ago, I used to paint um, ships for uh, Hallmark figures, and they were all done in the same way as well. Um, the sea will always look a different colour, dependent mostly on the sky. Um, so that sea might look okay for northern north sea might look okay for the mediterranean you need to pick what style you're going to go and stick with it somebody on, on the internet will go that's not the right color for the sea the sea changes the, the sea color can change in 30 seconds with um, a cloud going over the sun so um, this is my method if you like it great if you don't crack on find your own no problems at all so there we go, the ship base is done and that just leaves us with a ship to paint and we'll come back in part three and finish that off. Okay everyone, welcome to the uh, the final video on this painting uh, tutorial for one two four hundredth World War I naval ships. And um, so far on the videos we've looked at the ship itself, we've uh, made and sculpted the base we've um, prepped and painted the sea so the only thing that we've got left is the ship itself um, so 
let's get cracking and uh, get some paint down and uh, once again I'll go through all the colours as we go along um, there's not that many we're going to use um, first one is um, is this one and uh, this is uh, Vallejo 709 neutral grey and uh, use this one as uh, the base for my ships so you can probably see there um, it's a relatively light grey to be fair um, and uh, I'm using a uh, sable brush um, that's more due to the size of it than uh, me wanting to spend any money because if you've seen any of those video these videos uh, so far um, you'll know um, I have a fairly eclectic range of brushes that I use um, what we're trying to do with this is um, we're just trying to get a base coat down on the miniature and uh, where's my paint gun? Oh, there it is. And most ships of the of the time would be um, painted grey of some description, and um, then they would have a, a wooden or teak deck to them. And uh, on these models, you can probably see at the front there. Um, there's some uh, planking or indication of planking on the model uh, that we'll use later on um, when we do a wash on the decks to get a bit of um, detail on them. So what I'm what I'm doing while I'm painting uh, this is um, I'm using the black undercoat and I'm not painting everything 100% if you look at that closely you'll see I've left some black in between the secondary gun turrets and parts of the superstructure and the funnel and um, this is the whole reason why you're undercoating things in black uh, you're trying to use that to to provide a shadow there's no point undercoating any color black or white um, and then not actually using that for some reason um, and in this particular case we're using it for um, a little bit of shade if you like um, on the model that will just give us an extra layer later on so as you can see I've been fairly um, slappy dash on that um, it's just a base coat after all uh, the bit where we do need to do a bit of um, delicate -ish work is on the sides we obviously don't want to get a load of grey paint on our C um, and that's why I'm using a for me anyway a decent brush um, these uh, pro art paint brushes um, if you know these are the brand that I use all the time they're from uh, a company just up the road at Skipton and um, I think they're extremely good value um, I, I've never used a Windsor & Newton Series 7 um, I bet they're really good but if I can support a local business who produce paint brushes that I've used for 30 years plus and never had a problem with then I'm going to buy from their, them first so there we go um, that's the first kind of layer on the ship of neutral grey and uh, once again 
uh, with my painting it's time to get rid of the um, posh brush and uh, get one of my dry brushes out uh, whatever this was is uh, rubbed off a long time ago um, so uh, the next colour I'm going to use is this one you can tell that this is a, fa a fairly old bottle 70990 a light grey and I'm just going to use um, the heavy dry brush or drag technique as I prefer to call it um, to use this as a as a mid-tone on it so getting rid of most of the excess on the um, I'll say palette me bit of wood and just dragging down woods because obviously when the light is shining on these ships it's going to be hopefully unless something fairly drastic's happened um, coming from above so the highlight that you're trying to get should be on the upper edges of the ship and uh, so you will notice quite a considerable difference between the light grey and the neutral grey that's already on there and um, that's pretty acceptable already but I am going to use um, my favourite colour 70820 off-white um, just to put a final highlight on and you'll see I'm not putting a lot of this on the wood um, you know I'll very rarely do I have to buy new paints unless I'm getting a color I've not used before um, you know I've got stuff on here that's well over 10 years old and I think the, the Vallejo dropper bottles are fantastic in that they make your paint last forever especially if you use it sparingly I mean I've gone on a couple of times about wet palettes in previous videos and I don't really see the point of them unless you're doing multiple multiple layers of shading which um, is not my cup of tea um, but certainly I've, I've heard it said oh well you, you say if your paints don't go dry how much paint are you putting on your palette if you're waiting for it to dry anyway last moaning more painting so there we go um, this is the grey is done and um, I'm happy with that it's a nice subtle effect I've not gone too light with the final highlight there and um, that's going to look good on the table I'm happy with that so clean the brush up and then there isn't a massive amount of detail to paint on these a couple of fiddly bits but nothing too um, difficult so the first thing that I'm going to do is once I've sorted my paints out is uh, just get a tiny little bit of black um, just for the top of the funnels and again knackered old brush because all I'm doing is dabbing that on the top there just at the top of the funnels Next colour I'm going to use, and again this is um, is um, good old flat earth, 
Eventually it'll come out. Tiny, I don't need a lot of this because all I'm going to do with this is just put this in the inside of the light boat, lifeboat, just so that we've got a wood deck and then we're going to paint over the top of that. Models have got like the slats of wood that people would sit on they've got that painted into them uh, sorry sculpted into them so we'll use that later on to do like a little bit of a dry brush over the top of it and then finally um for my decks i'm going to use 70977 uh, desert yellow uh, it's probably a little bit darker than um decks are supposed to be um they should deck tan or um like a bleached wood um, but i just prefer this color it's not a million miles off what it would be and i just i just find it um makes the ship look a little bit more vibrant so all i'm going to do with this is paint over the areas of the deck that would be wood and I've gone back I've gone to my pro art sable um, four zero for this because uh, there is some tricky little areas that I need to get into and this is the bit if you're gonna make a mistake this is the bit where it's gonna happen because so far we've been splashing the paint on really um, you can get bits where you'll put grey onto the sea um, but uh, I've managed not to do that on this occasion so the the areas that need covering as I say are the, are the decked areas so if you can get a reference book or look on Google um, you should be able to find a deck plan of most of the ships uh, that fought in uh, World War One, World War Two, and that will give you an idea of which areas that you need to cover in uh, your deck colour. And um, here on this particular ship, we've got the main decks front and back, and then there's a there's like a tiny lower running deck. On both sides where this is where the lower layer of secondary guns are, are based so that's those done in and then this particular ship um, the Mecklenburg had a, a relatively unusual gun configuration at the front in that it had a an upper deck where they had the main a uh, single turret with two of the main guns in and then rather than that being on the main deck itself it was raised up above the main deck and then um, in that superstructure below the gun there was another couple of secondary guns uh, it had 18 secondary guns 5.9 inch guns which are uh, quite useful it's just it's lack of main armament that um, but this was prior to the dreadnought this was the standard layout of uh, most ships of the time uh, two turrets each with two guns main armament uh, 11 inch maybe guns um, and um, then dreadnought came along and just blew them all away by having load more guns all of the same caliber so there we go um painted the deck uh, so that's nice and easy um just need to sort out the um lifeboats now so 
going to go back. Oh, I'm going to use uh, this for the lifeboat. Um, silver grey, 70883. And it's, it'll come out eventually. Uh, here we go. And with the, the bright light, it's quite difficult to see the difference between colours on here but you can see there that the just this area here we've got the off-white there and then this is silver grey so you can see it's it is two or three shades darker um, and I just prefer this colour for light but lifeboats uh, rather than bright white that I just I just think it stands out too much on a ship so all I'm going to do is just do the edges of the lifeboats so I'll, I'll do that first just so I get rid of most of the paint off the top and then I'm just going to drag my brush sideways across these um, lifeboats just to get that effect you see we've got the white of the cross slats on the lifeboat and then the lifeboat painted if we look to the side and just finish this off now on this side same again just detailing in the exterior of the lifeboat and then dragging the brush across the top of them just to pick out those um, cross members in the light boat. So that's fairly good. Um, while I've got the silver grey out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the, the name on the bottom of here. You can see I've dropped some brown on the back see later there I'll correct that later on um, so this this ship is called the Mecklenburg um, so let's see if I can fit that in so I've spoke uh, somebody's question the way I do this um and asked why I don't print names on here and the reason is I've got extremely large collections <laughs> surprise surprise of World World War One and World War Two naval ships all of which were started prior to I know you youngsters will um, struggle to believe this but prior to colour printers so. And I've seen some lovely ones out there where people have um, you know, printed flags and names and they look great. Um, the problem I've got is with the, you know, Jutland, the Jutland collection alone is 250 ships. And then um, on top of that, I've probably got another, oh, I don't know, 100, 150 World War One ships. Um, from other parts, you know, other parts of the world, the stuff that didn't make it to Jutland, the stuff that was built later, etc. Um, so that's a lot of ships to um, sort out, really. Um, I'm just cleaning up that with a bit of navy blue. So that's the reason why I still hand paint there. Um, I don't want two types of look for my ships um, and it's a lot easier just to continue hand painting the names on rather than cracking on and putting something you know an entirely new system on and having to do it on 350 400 world war one ships and probably double that for world war two even though though they're in a um, smaller scale I've got 
um, the whole Italian fleet, the whole Japanese fleet, uh, it's down to destroyer level, plus a lot of US, uh, a lot of Brits. Um, so I've got Russians as well, Germans. It's too much work to do. Anyway, back to the painting. Um, and um, just to finish off, the old strong tone uh, quick shade army paint wash. Just going to use that to um, on the decks. And using my old one of my old battered brushes to do this, um, I try not to use ink with good brushes. Um, if you don't, if you even slightly outward cleaning them, the, the like stickiness of the ink causes all sorts of problems. Um, and all I'm doing is just putting this ink on the decks these tumbling dice miniatures although they're not as detailed as the GHQ miniature ships they are pretty good um, and the, the they've got decking, decking cut into the ship and the ink taste takes on to that rather nicely you can see there the front and the back you can see the, the planking on there uh, it works quite good so there we go that is our uh, ship finished and um, hope you've enjoyed that and uh, after we've finished it on this little bit of the video I'll just put some uh, shots of them all laid out I've done a big batch together and you can have a look at those and uh, thanks very much for watching